Welcome everyone to another week of Professor Whoopi's Bible Stories. We are continuing in our series today called Water's Edge Parables. Last week we talked about the thorn people and how not to be like those people because God has more for you. I am really excited about this series and hope that you will tune in each week. Today's parable is the fourth one in the parable of the sower, so hang on as we look into God's word today. Well kids, this is Rosie and I am going to let Professor Whippy come in just a moment and give you the introduction to our exciting story today. It's been great to be with you today. Kids, it is time for me to go. So you all next week. Later everyone. Well, kids. Hello. My name is Professor Whoopi and I'm here to whoopie up a big one for you today. Yes. I am so excited because today we are continuing in our series on the Water Edge Parables. That's right. And today we will conclude with the fourth part of the Parable of the Sower. Whoa! Well, after looking at all three types of soil today, the first was the pathway people, extremely hard-hearted and not wanting God in any way. And then we looked at the hard rock people, people who wanted God, but they were more interested in their friends and the world instead of following God. And the third one, we looked at the torn, thorn, excuse me, the thorn people who loved God, but the things of the world choked them away from God. So kids, today we are looking at the good soil, the soil that produces a great harvest, spiritually speaking. Well, hey, I need to sneak out of here for a while and I'll be back in a little bit and we will get into our lesson for today. So, later everybody.
Can you see yourself? This is a mirror. Mirrors have been around for hundreds of years, and they pretty much have one purpose, to reflect. They can reflect light, colors, and images. Can you imagine what it was like before they invented mirrors? They probably only had a lake or a pond to look at, and even then it wasn't an accurate reflection. I don't think you have blue or green skin. The best mirrors are flat, and they have the perfect reflecting surface. They can show things the way they really are. God wants us to do the same thing. Except, He doesn't want us to reflect ourselves. He wants us to reflect the image of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was the only perfect being who came down to live on this earth. We're not all perfect, and we accepted God's grace because of that. If you reflect Jesus in your actions and what you say, people will see what it's like to become a Christian, and they may want to become Christians too. Some people may not like what they see. There are a lot of Christians around the world who are not liked because they reflect Jesus and not themselves or the world. You have to use Jesus as your role model, and He will reflect Himself through you. He can make you the perfect mirror so that people will see what He is like. And what is Jesus like? He is kind and thoughtful. He doesn't do bad things, and He loves all people. Can He be like that? I know it's hard sometimes, but just like a mirror has to be in front of the object it's reflecting, you have to stand in front of Jesus to reflect His image. So next time you look at yourself in a mirror, think about how you can reflect Jesus' face today. So kids, let's continue our talk today by examining this next type of soil that the farmer came across while planting his seed. This type starts out to be okay and it begins to grow a great crop for harvest. Well, in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 8, it says, Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced the crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Well, now kids, that excites me very much. Now let's look at all these types of soils mentioned. Here are the same plot of ground, with one major difference, only one area was fully yielded to gardening, to being changed and prepared for planting. That area was called the good soil. In the parable of the sower and the seed, it can also be said, this is the parable about the soil. All four types of soil are essential. Essentially, ah, I can't even, can't even think about what I want to say today but they are essentially the same dirt, but in different conditions, a response in different ways to gardening. Everyone receives the seed, which represents the word of God, and everyone has potential for the harvest, living a fruitful life, but the ones who produce the most fruit will be the ones most yielded to gardening. In other words, the soil in each condition received the seed, but not all produced quality fruit. The greater my yielding to God's work in my life, the greater the capacity of my fruitfulness in life. Remember, it's you being willing to let God work in your life. Daddy and Mommy cannot do it for you. You need to do it with God's help. Well, kids, I'll be back in just a little while to wrap things up today. So, see you later.
right, boys and girls. So let's get on with the last part of this. Jesus addresses the first one. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. So in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, it tells us, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. In other words, the ability to hear God's and God and understand His message is often blocked by our own beliefs, learning standards, and likings. I believe humility is a necessity when approaching God's word. We must recognize that none of us is a blank slate and that we all pick and choose sometimes the parts of scripture that seem to best fit our understanding of God. But if we are to walk humbly with God, then we should be prepared to be surprised by what we learn when we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit's work in showing us what the scriptures mean to us. Yes, whoa. In other words, the good ground portrays that the one who hears and understands and receives the word and then allows the word to accomplish its result in his or her life. In other words, the man or woman represented by the good ground is only one of the four who is truly saved because salvation's proof is fruit. So to summarize the point of the parable of the sower, a man or woman receiving of God's word is determined by the condition of his or her heart. A secondary lesson would be salvation is more than a superficial thought, joyful, joyfully hearing of the gospel. So kids, never forget that someone who is truly saved will go on to prove it. In other words, may our faith and our lives represent the good soil in the parables of the sower. Well, Kids, this is Professor Whoopi, and I'm here to whoopie up a big one for you today. But until next time, when we continue in the parable of the weed and the tares, have a great day. Bye-bye. Avida say, arriba derchi. Hasta la vega. Aruba boo. <laughs> oh, don't you love God? I do. I hope you do too. Bye-bye.